this guy's garage. Like and subscribe. Mr. McKinnon, Mr. McKinnon, seconded by Ms. Anand, moves that the debate be not further adjourned. Pursuant to standing order 67-1, there will now be a 30-minute question period. Uh, the Honorable Member for Saskatoon University. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and to you, to, through you to the government. Um, this concoction of closure to continue the cover-up, is, is this part of the coalition agreement with the NDP? Uh, the Honourable Government House Leader. We're closing. What, uh, I, I do think the member is confused. We're trying to move uh, to back to the uh, agenda that provides fairness for every generation, gets to debating tangible things like pharmacare, dental care, expanding the rural rebate uh, on the price on pollution and giving, putting more pockets in the more money in the pockets of Canadians, uh, and uh, this member wishes to instead dance on the head of a pin on procedural matters. We're sure. trying to get back to business. The honourable member for La Prairie. This is an important debate on the fate of the speaker, which is indispensable in a democracy like ours. But the Liberals are trying to put a gag order on us. It's quite strange. They are rewriting the history books. Instead of limiting debate, perhaps it would be more appreciated by everyone if the Liberals politely ask the Speaker to step down. My colleague and I, in Quebec, we don't share a riding, but we share a province. And Quebecers uh, who talk to me about this they want the government to take action on things that will affect our constituents positively on a daily basis instead of going after the speaker with procedural motions, uh, with uh, vengeance. They want us to get on with real business. We've had Conservatives uh, viciously attacking the speaker repeatedly. And we see uh, in what happened in Saskatchewan, uh, this is a Conservative Party ruling in Saskatchewan, uh, what they did to the Speaker there. Just going to cite uh, for the record, uh, the Speaker in his uh, final statement said uh, that my experience with the Conservative uh, Government House Leader included threatening gestures whenever I rule against him in the Assembly, he would start yelling at me and standing up and flashing his suit jacket as the gestures and behavior became more aggressive, I worried that he might be carrying a handgun. My concerns over his mental stability and his obsession with guns was only confirmed when he heckled after the passing of the motion to devolve all relevant parts of the firearms stock to the province. He twice yelled, open carry, open carry, next. And it goes on, Madam Speaker. I, I think the, the, what we're seeing uh, taking place in conservative-held provinces with the Speaker, what we see happening federally is an attempt by conservatives to try to move aside from the agenda. Why are they doing this? I would ask my colleague. The Honourable Leader of the Government in the House. Well, Madam Speaker, that's a very good question, and I think we've watched with uh, absolute horror uh, some of the events. No one in Canada can imagine that a cabinet minister, a house leader of all things, uh, would walk into a legislature in this country, uh, threaten the presiding officer, um, then concoct stories, alibis, and fabrications yes. To, uh, yes. to cover that up. Get to the relevance of the question at hand, and uh, I understand the Honourable Member is answering the question, but uh, we would like relevance, yes. I think I am answering that question, Madam Speaker. Um, the, the, the fact is that this culture of guns and violence and threats is something that we never want to see in this Parliament. Um, and while um, uh, what we see today is a further attempt to intimidate the chair, to the speaker, to uh, engage in delay and uh, uh, unnecessary uh, political games. Um, the fact is that this culture of uh, intimidating the chair is uh, something that we've seen in other legislatures, and I think Canadians are rightly horrified by it.
Sure. I would like to ask a question specifically about the conservative tactics here. You know, I, I find it incredibly rich that conservatives are attacking uh, our Speaker of the House of Commons for, uh, you know... to have to inform my colleagues that he, he is to all our ours. speaker because he's our he's the house's speaker and this is our house unless i'm unless i have something wrong here he is the speaker he is a speaker that was a he is a speaker a speaker that was elected by all of us regardless of how you casted your cast your vote it's it but this is actually further proves my point Madam speaker but here's the irony is that they're going after the speaker of the house of commons for uh, uh, an image that was uh, uh, added to something about a fundraiser. Meanwhile, the member from Reg the member from uh, uh, Regina Capel actually attended a fundraiser of the member from Regina Wiscona while he was Speaker of Whoa. this House. While he, that member from Regina Capel, was our Speaker, he attended a fundraiser. Now, would the, the would the House Leader not find it incredibly hypocritical? To to suddenly be attacking this speaker, our speaker, as a result of uh, what uh, what actually transpired back in the day with the member from Regina Capel. Good question. The leader for the government. You know, it always amazes me, uh, and I thank uh, my colleague for that question. It always amazes me that the people over here think Canadians aren't watching. They know the facts that he just related. They know that. Uh, uh, Speaker of the House, being a member of Parliament, must do the things that are the basics necessary to uh, attempt to be re-elected in their constituency. They must do the basics required of them by their political party. They must do the basics required of them as a regional member of Parliament and a representative of the place they come from. Conservatives think that no one sees that. But people, of course, can understand that. And what I think troubles those of us watching, those that are watching today, Madam Speaker, is what has happened to this place where it used to be that when the Speaker was elected, we moved on with our business, debating the issues of the day, the back and forth on uh, the various issues that come before us. Instead, these Conservatives try every day to disrupt our work by showing disrespect you're not allowed to stand, for example, when the Speaker is standing. Well, these Conservatives, led by their leader, will stand up in defiance of the Speaker. They will speak over the Speaker. They will send insults, bordering on, bordering on uh, uh, insults that uh, are entirely inappropriate in this place or in any place. Madam Speaker, these Conservatives better... Uh, better worry about the kind of seeds that they are sowing because they are breaking the norms, the customs, and the respect that has governed this place for centuries. The Honourable Member for South Creek Interlake, Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker uh, the comments by the Government House Leader um, are, you know, so disappointing that uh, instead of protecting the sanctity of this place, of our House of Commons, and uh, the House of Commons is our House of Commons, and that is our chair, but the current chair, but the current chair occupant, Madam Speaker, the current chair occupant has proved that they are not fit to be in that chair. Now we have a decision that was made by the deputy speaker about the partisan activities of the speaker. I don't know what type of baseball the Liberals play there, empowered by the RNDP coalition to shut down debate on a privilege motion. But the last time I looked, in baseball, three strikes are out. And we got the speaker now on three different occasions, that he, or actually this is the fourth occasion, that he has done partisan activities and given partisan speeches uh, and has been found each and every time that he has violated the rules of this place. Now we have a question of privilege in front of us, Madam Speaker, and I'd, I turn to chapter three of uh, the third edition of the rules and practices of the House of Commons on page 150. It says, once a motion is properly moved, second and proposed to the House, it is subject to all the procedures and practices relating to debate on a substantive motion, then the speeches are limited, but the House has uh, considered all of this of the conduct of the member, in this case, the Speaker. Now. 
once approved motion is under debate and has priority over all orders of the day, including government orders and private members' business. And there's no and, there, and the debate does not interfere with the routine procedure statement of, by members. Question period. We're all sent and deferred into the house. Uh, other scheduled uh, private members' business. So we've done our orders of the day, Madam Speaker. But now we have the Liberals, empowered by their NDP coalition partners, shutting down debate and removing closure on a question of privilege that relates to the very confidence that all of us in this House of Commons has in the Speaker. And I can tell you, the Speaker should do the honourable thing and resign, and then and the House Leader should actually do, do that instead of forcing us to The Honourable uh, House Leader. That member is an experienced member of this House. That member knows that uh, what we are trying to do is getting back to the business that affects Canadians, that will put uh, benefits and food on the table for Canadians in their daily lives. He represents a riding that would benefit, for example, uh, from the rural rebate getting increased on the price on pollution. Th that we're going to vote on later today, and we'll see how that member stands up for uh, assisting people uh, in uh, his constituency. The fact is, though, Madam Speaker, that the claims today being made against the Speaker of the House are fake. The claims right. today being made are entirely conjured in conservative backrooms. Just like Why? Your support for Ukraine. Because right. they wish to delay and disturb the proceedings right. of this House. It is that simple, and we are simply trying to get us back on track. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. I'm sure the longest serving NDP House Leader in history, Stanley Knowles, is rolling over in his grave at what this House Leader for the NDP just said, that he thinks that one of the most fundamental principles of a parliamentary democracy, the neutrality of the Speaker, is not worthy of a privilege debate when the Speaker, the Deputy Speaker, has actually ruled that the Speaker pursued partisan activities, breaching his neutrality. And this government House Leader, who has a responsibility to enforce and uphold the rules of this House, has called that ruling of the Deputy Speaker fake. And that's reprehensible that this government House Leader would question the ruling of the Deputy Speaker on this issue. The government House Leader has a responsibility, first and foremost, as, as my colleague from Manitoba said, to understand that the rules say a privilege motion debate is more important than any other piece of legislation in this House. I know the NDP doesn't understand it. I expected more from the government House Leader, but yet twice this week he's imposed closure on issues. Every single bill, every single issue, this government imposes closure. They are cutting off democracy and debate at every turn, and he has no respect for the rules of this House. The Honourable Government House Leader. And this is what it's come to, Madam Speaker. Uh, of all things, I can't believe my ears, a conservative under this leader of the opposition quoting Stanley Knowles. <laughs> Stanley Knowles who had a reverence for this place. Stanley Knowles, Stanley Knowles who achieved the status of having a permanent place in this place. And to compare the actions of this Conservative Party wow. with the actions of a person who inspires us all by his reverence for our democratic institutions is something that, quite frankly, frankly, is shocking. It's right out of the MAGA playbook where up is down and north is south and black is white. Madam Speaker, these Conservatives have become masters in turning uh, words around and making base populist appeals, but what they really do, we see it in the United States, we see it here, is they stand up every day and they stop earnest, honest attempts to make life better for people from becoming reality instead of, in, instead of standing up and obstructing and delaying and insulting and yes, Madam Speaker, disrespecting our democratic institutions. For Kingston and the Island. Or Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, the idea that a speaker who is represented by individuals in their community cannot be partisan is absolutely ludicrous. I come from the writing of the longest serving Speaker of the House of Commons, Peter Milliken. I personally attended 
fundraisers that Peter Milliken put on as a liberal in our riding while he was speaker. There's an established practice for it. it but, you know, if you don't want to listen to the longest serving speaker of the House of Commons and what he did, let's just talk about his predecessor, the member from Regina Capel, the House leader right now for the Conservatives. While he was speaker, he attended not only a fundraiser in his riding, which he did those, it. but he went to the neighboring riding of Regina Wiscana and attended a fundraiser. There's documented evidence of it. I've tried to table it in the House of Commons before. There are pictures of him at that fundraiser, but of course, conservatives would never let me do that. So it begs the question, why are conservatives and the bloc hell-bent on taking down this particular speaker? I can't wrap my head around it. Why are they after this speaker of the House of Commons? It's a very good question. House Leader. We can only wonder, Madam Speaker, we can only wonder why this Conservative Party will not relent in its attempts to derail the work of this House and to attack the chair and the democratic institution that we are all so privileged to serve in. It is, I can only explain it, Madam Speaker, with the word hypocrisy. Interlake Eastman. Madam Speaker, the comments just made by the government house leader, the member from Gatineau, are contemptuous at best. What we're debating here right now is closure on, on, on a decision made by the Deputy Speaker that the Speaker has a prima facie case of violated the privilege of this house. And just to remind the, the government house leader, the rights accorded to the members of the house to allow them to perform the parliamentary functions unimpeded are referred to as privileges and immunities. And on page 323 of the procedure uh, and House Affairs book, it says, when in the chair the Speaker embodies the power and authority of the office strengthened by rule and precedent, he must at all times show and be shown to have impartiality required to sustain the trust and goodwill of the House. The Speaker has lost the goodwill and trust of this House, and that is why the Speaker, Deputy Speaker found him in contempt of Parliament and a prima facie case at that. Very brief answer from the Honourable Government House Leader. There are lots of questions of privilege raised by lots of opposition, and that has happened over the course of history, and there's a way to resolve that, and that's what we are proposing to move to right now, Madam Speaker. That's what we will be doing. We will be doing so serenely, democratically, and within the rules and procedures of this House, and that member should reflect on how this is going in terms of respect for our democratic institutions in that right wing. It is my duty to interrupt the proceedings at this time. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, today I, I rise in this place in order to address a question of privilege that has been raised with regards to the Speaker's public display of partisanship. Now, of course, we know that the Speaker of this place occupies a position of trust. And we know that within that position of trust, he is supposed to function in an impartial manner. He is supposed to apply the rules in this place equally to all members of all parties. When he functions in a partisan capacity, however, he then betrays the trust of those who occupy a seat within the House of Commons. He goes beyond the scope of his role and actually uses it then for the benefit of his political party, in this case the Liberal Party of Canada. The events that I'm talking about are several in nature, but the latest one was a summer evening with the Honourable Greg Fergus, said the announcement. And this was a fundraiser that was hosted just across the river in Quebec, or, or deemed to be hosted just across the river in Quebec, and this invitation was sent out drawing attention to the speaker as the keynote. But this isn't the first time. This is the latest event that brings us to the House calling for his resignation or, or calling for a vote to remove him. But before this, there was a cocktail fundraiser dinner that was hosted just a couple of months ago, where again, he was used as the keynote of this address or this function. And of course, as speaker, he was promoted, again in a partisan fashion and used as an individual who could help elicit funds for the Liberal Party of Canada. And, and that's not all. There's a third one that I would like to draw the House's attention to. And that is that the Speaker actually, in his full outfit, jet-setted to Washington and addressed uh, the, the, the audience that he was given there and talked about his time as a young liberal and in a very partisan fashion addressed the audience that was in front of him, his third strike. But there's two more that I would like to draw this House's attention to for a total of five within just the last few months of him being Speaker. 
In this place, there was an interaction that took place between the Prime Minister and the leader of the official opposition. The Prime Minister exchanged words or used words to accuse the official opposition of being a, quote, spineless leader. And in retort, the leader of the opposition responded with words that were similar. The Speaker of the House said nothing to the Prime Minister, but then went on to kick out the member of the official opposition, again pointing to a partisan decision. And there's a fifth incident that I would like to draw attention to, and that is I myself was removed from this place. I was removed from this place because I used these words toward the Speaker. I said that he was, quote, acting in a disgraceful manner, end quote. I was asked by the Speaker of the House to withdraw my words, which I rose in my seat, and I said, I withdraw. However, the Speaker went on to kick me out of the House, not just for a little while, but actually for the remainder of the day, therefore robbing the constituents of Lethbridge from having a vote in this place. Now, Madam Speaker, it is the practice of this House, and it is in fact according to the standing orders, that should a member stand in her place and withdraw those words, she should be allowed to stay. But the Speaker functioning in a partisan capacity removed me. If those blues are looked at, it is very clear that I said I withdraw. It is in the official record of the House. If the audio is listened to, you can hear me say those words, I withdraw. It is clear within the audio record of this House. But when it came to the Hansard, which is signed off by the Speaker's office, those words, I withdraw, were conveniently removed. So there is already another question of privilege before this place, which is to say, why were those words removed? Why did the Speaker's office sign off on official Hansard records that remove my withdrawal? Mm -hmm. Madam Speaker, in this place, the Speaker must function in a trusted capacity. He must respect the members of this place, and he must never be partisan in nature, nor should records ever be officially changed based on what is convenient for him. <coughs> Madam Speaker, based on his conduct over these five incidents, we are asking for his resignation, and if not, then we would like to remove him through a vote. Questions and comments. Questions and commentaires. The Honourable Government, uh, Parliament Secretary to the Government House Leader. Yes, uh, Madam Speaker, let there be no doubt that the Conservative Party is just playing a game here. This is the Conservative right mega attacks on the institution itself. And let's be very clear, the Conservatives do have a, a double standard. When it was a Conservative House leader that was the Speaker that has a fundraiser, no problem. Not one Conservative stands up. On the issue that we have before us in the last 24 hours, Madam Speaker, it's something in which it had nothing to do with the Speaker. It was the Liberal Party of Canada that formally apologized for, take, for doing and publishing uh, what they did. So they're punishing or attempting to punish the wrong entity, uh, Madam Speaker. The question to the member and the Conservative Cox today is how can they continue to make a mockery of what it is that, in, that faces reality when this Speaker in this situation did absolutely nothing wrong? Great question. Left bridge. Madam Speaker, I think the member addresses exactly the problem with this place. The fact that the Liberal members don't see anything wrong with the Speaker functioning in a partisan capacity five times in the last few months. Five times. One might be forgivable, two possibly, but five times. Mm -hmm. And for the honourable member to say that, that standing up for democracy and wanting to protect the institution of Parliament is, quote, desperate, to use his words, makes me question his commitment to democracy and the very foundations of Canada and what our forefathers fought for. Yep.